What's up, fam? Welcome back to the We Are Just Dating page. If you're new here, my name is Tim, and we just had a baby. Me and my wife, we just had a beautiful baby boy. Loki is going on a month on Thursday, which is crazy. Time is flying, and we're not sleeping. So, y'all, say a prayer for us. But with that being said, next week, we are going back to recording our regular W podcast format. So if you have a question, we're doing all new questions. Send us a question. You guys should do it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there, right there, right there is where you can do a question. We would love to answer any question that you have about relationships. We want to help you and provide perspective that will help you have a successful relationship. So last week, we posted a clip from an old, old throwback Q&A video that Pauline and I did. And we're actually gonna post a clip from part two of that video. There was two parts to it. We're gonna post a clip from that right now. And then we're gonna jump into question of the day. And we got a good one today. It's spicy, so stick around for that. And we'll see you guys in the next podcast. What type of boundaries do you have set up in your relationship? And why are boundaries even important? Like, why can't people just do what they want to do? Well, first of all, boundaries are important because they help you... Get not, you go. Yeah, they help you get where you want to go. Yeah. So, you know, pastors use this illustration all the time. When you're driving on the highway, that line, you know, where you get on the line and start hearing those bumps, like mm-hmm. the ridges, mm-hmm. like that is a boundary to keep you from going over the cliff. So boundaries are good. A lot of things, you hear boundaries, you're like, uh, like it's restriction. But no, yeah. boundaries are to keep you in the right place, going in the right path. Uh, so that's why boundaries are good, because it keeps you focused. It keeps you going mm-hmm. in the straight yeah. line. Yeah. Uh, so some of the boundaries we have is, we kind of alluded to it, we don't stay in the house alone. So we really are never in the house that much together. They really don't, guys. Before I got here, they were We're in the clubhouse, yeah. Mm-hmm. Another boundary is we actually don't kiss. Mm-hmm. Now, we can tell a story about that. Yeah, please but, do. Because we started off kissing. I know some okay. people are going to hear that, oh, they don't kiss, they, whatever. It's not, we're not better than anybody. Yeah. That's not why we did it. We did it because when we were kissing, it was too much. Yeah. Uh, now, praise God, we never you know, went too far and like we didn't touch any inappropriate places yeah. or anything like that. I praise God for that. Yeah. But the kissing was still too hot and heavy yeah. when we were doing it. Yeah. So I think we kissed, we were kissing for like the first six months. Yeah. And it was just too much. And it got to the point where we realized it was hindering like our relationship with God. And yeah. It was crazy because looking back on it, that first six months, we kind of felt lonely yeah. in dating. Like we didn't have that many friends that were dating we didn't feel like we were plugged into community yeah so after we stopped kissing i feel like that's when god really started speaking to us and giving us vision for what our relationship should look like because Mm -hmm. instead of being in each other's faces all the time now we can hear god clearly um we're not distracted yeah um, by each other yeah Yeah. Uh, so you want to know um other boundaries i mean i think we should talk about some good boundaries too. No, they're all good. But um yeah, like boundaries are like fences too. It keeps the good things in and the bad things out. Yeah. And that's gonna look different in every season. Cause one thing I think people forget about is like there's gonna be boundaries in marriage too, or there should be. Mm-hmm. Um, just like how now, you know, like you don't have sex with somebody you're not married with. Yeah. You're not gonna be having sex with somebody you're not married with when you're you know, when you're married as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like kind of now and I thank God for this, you know, like Tim has done, ever since we stopped kissing almost two years ago, um, you know, we've gotten in a good habit of, like, killing our flesh. Yeah. And, you know, like, we, um, even, like, you know, protecting our eyes from certain, like, you know, TV shows or visuals yeah. or, you know, all that, all of those different things. Because um, you don't want, you know, to get caught up in lust and things like that. And that's going to help us transfer into marriage and, like, disciplining ourselves. So it's like, okay, well, I didn't kiss people that I wasn't married to, you know, for a while. Yeah. And, like, so now moving into marriage, like, you know, because people get into weird situations when you're married just because the enemy hates healthy marriages. Yeah. And he is going to attack, you know, your healthy marriage. Yeah. So, it's like, if you're doing things now to prepare yourself for that, like, okay, I only look at my wife. I only touch my wife I only, or my husband or whatever. And so, like, when people approach you, like, say if you're at work and people are trying to be like, oh, you know, Karen, you look real good. And you're like, I'm married. And they're like, I don't okay. care. You know, like, I can treat you better than your husband. Like, that's real life stuff. Like, it that is. happens to people. Um, you know, one of the reasons why the divorce rate is so high is because people aren't disciplining themselves yeah. to step away from those situations. Um, you know, the Bible says, you know, flee from sexual immorality. But if you're not fleeing now, it's going to be hard for you to flee later. Yeah. So um, that's one thing, one of the 
things that I'm grateful for for our for our boundaries now because it's going to be a lot easier for us to say no because mm-hmm. we're saying no now mm-hmm. versus like if you say yes to everything now it's going to be really easy for you to say yes to everything later yeah um so that's you know another way to think about boundaries um you're gonna have to do them if you want to have a god honoring marriage um i mean we like we make sure we try to communicate as much as possible we have monthly meetings so we talk about our lives and like hey what do you have going on next month Mm -hmm. what do we have planned together like family stuff birthday parties all that stuff just because like communication is a really big thing in in relationships yeah and like you would hate be like oh well you know i thought we were going here and you were going there and you know so we just try to um, communicate about things. Also, just want, the monthly meeting isn't just for like that, where are you going and what do you have to mm-hmm. do? It's also, mm-hmm. hey, where are we in our relationship? Hey, where are we with honoring God? Mm-hmm. Where are we with how we treat each other? How do you feel about this relationship? How can I treat you better this month? What's one thing you learned about me this month? So yeah. that's also what that time is for. Yeah, like yeah. For, to reflect. Um, but yeah, so I mean, those are the, obviously the, the physical boundaries are going to be the most important because just the type of like world and culture we live in, mm-hmm. it's very easy for the enemy to use that to distract um, the couple or the individuals. Yeah. So those are big things. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about obviously like, when we travel and stuff, which we have to do because my family doesn't live here. Mm-hmm. Um, other couples don't have to, and that's great. But um, yeah, like, we still keep our same boundaries even when we're not in our regular routine. Yeah. So, and I think one thing I want to say is our boundaries changed or got more strict as we progressed. Yeah. Uh, or they just were different. So like when we were just talking, we were dating. Like, like we didn't talk after 10 p.m. at night or yeah. something like that. Sometime uh, where we weren't talking after that point mm-hmm. because it was like we're not even really dating yet. Yeah. So like let's not let's just yeah, try to yeah. protect ourselves as much as possible before we nobody's made any type of commitment yeah. at this point. Uh, and that was tough too. <laughs> that was tough. Not talking after that 10 p.m. because you're like, yeah. oh, I like this person. I want to talk. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, like let's let's keep it here. But then once we started dating, we pushed that time back a little bit yeah. and had more time. Um, but we're not talking at like one and two in the morning. Right. <laughs> we cut it off after yeah, that. Too tired. Yeah, yeah. we sleep anyway. <laughs> but that was just another example of something that we did during that yeah time. it's changes within the season it's just yeah. like people get new jobs and and things like that you're gonna have to change your boundaries or your set times or whatever so yeah um yeah so you know that's why we have those monthly meetings like kind of evaluate where we are and even now like in this engagement season we're about to have more meetings because now it's not just about our relationship we're gonna have wedding planning meetings yeah. and we're about to have counseling meetings with people so it changes like you said mm-hmm. every season yeah so let's talk about the engagement phase. Actually, that's like okay. the last phase. But how do you how did you transition from like courtship? I mean, in the sense of dating, it's almost the same. But how do you transition out? How did you know? Okay, this is time for me to propose to Pauline. Like this is the time. Did you get any com- sense of confirmation, or was did confirmation come long before? So I know for me, I knew before we even started dating that the type of personality that Pauline had was the type of personality I needed in a woman who I'm gonna marry. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even like, oh, I know Pauline is the one or anything mm-hmm. like that, because there is no the one. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there is no the one. Uh, but she had the type of personality that I need. She's very aggressive, she likes to get things done. Mm-hmm. And like, without Jesus, I have a tendency to get lazy and not do things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's crazy how <laughs> once we started dating, I made honor roll every semester mm, after that. List. Dean's list, whatever it's honor called. <laughs> yeah, Dean's list. I didn't make it that much. So. <laughs> uh, but before that, I was like getting D's in classes. Yeah. I don't, I had, because I had no accountability and I had no reason to really, I knew I needed somebody that would, you. yeah, I, I needed somebody that would motivate me to be better than myself. Yeah. And like some people can do that by themselves, mm-hmm. but that just ain't me. So I'm grateful that I'm getting married younger, <laughs> post yeah. later, because I'm way more focused now. Like, Tim two years ago was I brought up the best in you. You did. I don't That's know what good. I was doing before. So I think for me it was more time. When was the time yeah. to propose to Pauline? Because mm-hmm. like we wanted to, we wanted to marry each other like six, eight, nine months in. Right. But I was still in school. The money just it didn't make any. I wasn't sense. working full yeah. time. Yeah. It just didn't make sense. And like it's funny because I felt like God told me not to save for a ring, 
until after I graduated. And like there was a lot of times like I would try to like save some money up separately. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, just put this here just in case. I'm being wise. You know, I'm <laughs> saving money. Bad, yeah, I'm saving being wise. Money. But it's crazy. Every time I try to do that, oh flat tire. Oh, let me take that money, put it to the flat tire. Yeah. So God was really like not with that. And literally once I graduated, like a month or two after, not even yeah. I had the money to get the ring. People my friends were blessing me. Shout mm-hmm. out to y'all, y'all know who you are. Mm-hmm. People were blessing me with money. Obviously you get graduation money. Yeah. So I was able to get the ring fairly quickly. Yeah. And I had a piece about, okay, now it's finally time. Because before, you know when you want something, but you don't really have a piece about it, but yeah. you try to like ignore it. You're yeah. like, oh nah. But I knew, okay, I have a piece about it now, it makes sense. Yeah. And then I talked to Pastor Damon, was like, I think it's right. He was like, yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he was like, make sure you talk to her dad, even right. though I was already gonna do that. But yeah. uh, So I flew up to, to talk to her dad and he gave me the blessing. Uh, and well, then, you didn't just call him on the phone. You flew no, up. I flew up to that's Boston. Good. I paid money for that flight. Yeah. Oh my God. I paid money for that zip car. Pay money to fill that gas back up. <laughs> this was not. This was an expensive and trip. And you brought yeah. them my parents' gifts. I bought them yeah. gifts. No one expensive that's, that's, gifts. That's how you do it. Yeah, but he's very honoring. They got like some Hershey that's kisses good. or something. But it was a gift. Just, yeah, yeah, anything, whatever. You Flowers. Can get. Yeah. 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 Um, but I went all the way up there. It was a one day trip. Flew mm-hmm. in, got what I needed. Oh, yeah. Flew out. <laughs> uh, showed them the ring. I took the ring yeah. with me. Showed them I'm oh, serious. You want right. to let them know yeah. like, this is not a joke. Especially when you're younger. Yeah. Parents can be like, oh, you know, what's, yeah, what's this boy about yeah, to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. They don't know what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no. Like, here you go. Yeah. Bling, bling. Uh, laid out the plan. So I was out. I was there for like five hours just talking to them about Crazy. it. <laughs> they fixed me food. That was nice. Yeah. But anyway. My parents are very nice. I love her parents. Yeah, so <laughs> came back, got a blessing a few weeks later. Uh, began mapping out a plan of how I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, mentors helped me. They have a nice apartment complex and yeah. they had like a little lounge area or whatever you want to call it. And I had like an after party there. Mm-hmm. And before that, had a proposal mm-hmm. at another location with friends around. Mm-hmm. It's also important, fellas, because you gave Liddy's a tip earlier. So, fellas, make sure you know what she wants with their proposal because every woman is different. Some yeah. women, yeah. some women, they want to have it private, just yeah. you two. Some people want a bunch of people around. Some people want to mix, which is confusing. But, <laughs> <laughs> but just make sure you know what she wants and that'll help you plan. So. Yeah. What's up, fam? Welcome back to the We Are Just Dating page. If you're new here, my name is Tim. This is my beautiful wife, Pauline, and this is Question of the Day, where we answer your anonymous questions that you can submit in our bio. So make sure you go and do that. We get questions almost every week. We would love to get your question. So let's get right into it this week. What is the question of the day? Okay. So this week's question is, is French kissing wrong while dating? Short and sweet. Very short. And kissing is sweet. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Is Christian wrong while dating? Now, I'll be upfront and say there's a lot of different opinions on this among Christians. Well, they said specifically French kissing. French kissing? What is that like? Tongue. Tongue and stuff? I, I think there's still some people that have different perspectives. All that to say, we've looked in the Bible. We haven't seen in the Bible talk about kissing specifically, right? So we're not going to outrightly say kissing is wrong. But what we are going to say is from our perspective, we would advise you to avoid it. And here's why we say kissing that. Kissing in general? Or kissing, kissing, kissing in general. Avoid oh, it in general. Wow. In general. It's too good. All right. <laughs> now, here's why. So Pauline and I, if you don't know, we dated and were engaged for two and a half years total. And the first six months of our relationship when we were dating, we was kissing. We was kissing. We was kissing. All right. We was kissing. Okay. It was, it, we was kissing. So we had to figure out, is this something that is going to be sustainable for our relationship? Because we knew because of financial situations, I was still in school, we weren't going to be able to get married as soon as we would have liked to. Right. And if we would have kept on the rate that we were going, we would not have made it in purity, y'all. Let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times when it comes to kissing, we give ourselves too much credit. We think that we're holier. It's just a kiss. We can do that. Right. It's not that big of a deal. But we don't realize that kissing was low-key designed to take us to another place. It wasn't a, yeah, it's a, it's a gateway drug. Uh, I'll explain in the video later on why you should, three reasons why you should avoid kissing. 
while you're dating and how it can actually be a blessing to you to avoid it. But what do you have to say? Yeah, Tim gave you guys that the general overview and instead of just talking about just friends kissing, he talked about kissing in general, which I totally agree. Um, but for the person who asked this, to give you a straightforward answer, um, it's definitely not wrong if you're looking for like, is this sinful? Is it, am I going to get in trouble with God? Um, you know, if I kiss my girlfriend or my boyfriend with, you know, a tongue or whatever, um, it's not necessarily wrong. But what I want you to move away from is instead of, um, right and wrong, black and white, is this sin, not sin, but is this wise? Is this wise for me to do? Is it wise for my girlfriend or for my boyfriend? It's just like Tim said, kissing can absolutely be a gateway drug or it can lead to other things. That's really what it's designed to do. Um, and it's, it's wonderful, you know, when you're married, um, to use kissing as a way to show affection and all those different things. I'm sure a lot of you guys enjoy kissing because it's fun and it is a way to physically show your affection to somebody who you care a lot about um and we're not saying that you know that that your your desire to to show your affection is bad yeah god created us to be sexual beings like Absolutely. let's just put that out front right but you also you know learn that the bible and God intended for us to um, to exercise self control. So just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Um, so and Paul talks about that in the Bible as well. You know, it's not everything that's permissible permissible is beneficial. And for me, French kissing is definitely one of those things. If you guys know me, you know that I love cookies. Like I thought you were about so to say, you know, much. I love kissing. I was like, oh wow. We yeah, so I do love kissing. You love. <laughs> I love I love cookies. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys also have sweet tooths. Um, but but how many of you guys know, like, just because I can't eat cookies every single day, my doctor hasn't told me, oh, you're not allowed to do this. Like, if you do this, you're going to die. But, you know, if I eat cookies every day, that probably is going to lead to me eating ice cream and all these other things. And it's not wise for me to do that. And you guys all know that it's not wise to eat sweets every single day, all day for every meal. But I could do it. I'm an adult. You know, I live on my own with my husband as long as my mom is controlling me. You know, when I'm eating the same thing is for you guys. Like, just because you can French kiss or kiss at all doesn't mean that it's beneficial for you. So I would take a step back and say, when we do kiss, where does that lead us? Where does that take my mind? Where does that take my hands? You know, like, am I, am, am I going places that I really shouldn't be going? Because a lot of times kissing does lead to uh, worse things and worse kind of situations. Um, and so that's why I would say it's not wise, especially if you are younger um, or you find yourself like, hey, I'm going to be dating for a long time. Some We do know cu couples who have kissed and, you know, it's probably the most successful when you're only dating for like six months, eight months. But all the couples we know who have not kissed, um, they were so grateful for it. Yeah, I've never met somebody who was who like, man, how, they're married and like, man, I wish we kissed more. Exactly. You'll have plenty of time to do that when you're married. Um, but dating is really the time for you guys to get to know each other, to talk a lot, kissing, and just physical, you know, kind of expressions a lot of times are extremely distracting. Um, you can you could be talking and walk and working out your problems. A lot of times people use kissing and physical um, kind of expression in order and, and to avoid having conversation. So like you see in movies where it's like, you know, the girl is all mad at the guy and the guy starts kissing her and then it's like, no bro, like have a conversation. Shh, shh, just calm down, baby, calm down. Yes, calm. exactly. You don't want to do that because you're missing out on an opportunity to build vital communication skills. So I would say that. Cool. All right, so I said I would give three tips at the end of this video or three reasons why you should consider not kissing. Because I know some of y'all going to disagree. I, I like kissing my boyfriend, my girlfriend. And we're not saying you're wrong. You should enjoy it. If you don't like or have a desire to kiss somebody, you probably shouldn't be with right. them. We're not telling y'all what to do. We're just giving you perspective on, how, on ways you could think about the situation. So, three reasons why you should consider not kissing. First thing is this. It can lead to lust. Let's be honest here. If you're doing it right, you're going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest here. It can lead to lust because your body is excited when you're kissing. There, there's actually studies. I'm not going to go all the way here, but there's studies about how when you're kissing, there's actually drugs in your brain that drugs. are going off. Oxytocin. Oxytocin that's going off in your brain saying, I like this more and more and more. Mm, and insatiable. Jesus, who we all are trying to follow here, right? If you're watching this, you're trying to get closer to God. Jesus actually says that if you can look at a woman lustfully, that you have committed adultery. So in my head, I'm like, if I'm looking at a woman what's and that's lustful, her, yeah. what's going to happen if I kiss? Because when I'm kissing, I'm not thinking about Jesus. I don't know about right. you, but I'm not thinking about Jesus. I'm right. thinking about 
And you're kind of revving up the engine of your of your body as well. Your body's going to, you know, and we see it, guys, it's a little bit more visible, but like, you know, your your body's thinking, oh, we're, we're about to do something. We're yes. about to go somewhere. Is it okay that you can, you know, or <laughs> what his penis feels like up against your leg? Let's just be real. Wow, just go for it. And again, <laughs> we've been through this, right? We did this, and this is the reason we had to stop, because we were getting ourselves in situations we didn't need to be. So just think about that. Second thing is this. It can prevent you from learning more about your partner. Yeah. Like we said over and over in this video, kissing can be a distraction. I remember when we were kissing, we, instead of learning more about each other, asking each other questions about each other, seeing how each other acts in situations, we would just start kissing. We would look for ways to kiss. We would look for ways, how can we, how can we do this activity that we like so much? Because it really does. It can does, be like obsessive. Yeah. Yes, it can really get obsessive. So instead of, like Pauline said earlier, talking about situations when you get upset or when you're angry, you just say, you know what? Let's not argue. Let's just make out and be happy, right? Like that can really happen and that can take away from you getting to know each other. And then you get married if that does happen. And then you're like, why don't we know how to have conflict? Because we never did it when we were dating. Yeah. Don't let that be you. Third thing is this. Reasons you should consider not kissing. Third thing is it can help you build self-control. Yeah. Pauline mentioned this earlier. God has given us a spirit of self-control that we can actually, the that's one of the fruits of the spirit, yeah. excuse me, that we can actually walk out is self-control. And maybe that's something that you struggle with in your life in general. Maybe you are like Pauline and you want to eat cookies every day. I don't do that. <laughs> but you actually do it. I wish I could. <laughs> Lord, sweets are so good. But maybe self-control is an issue for you. What if this was something that you challenged for yourself? Hey, I'm because maybe you're single and you're watching this. Hey, when I start dating, I'm not going to kiss. And what if you use that as a way to exercise self-control? How proud of yourself would you be to know that you married and you crossed the finish line and you actually stood to your word and you said, hey, I'm not going to kiss and you did it? Yeah, that's possible. Through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within you, you can right. actually not kiss. How do we know that? Because we did it. We're not just talking about Bible. We're not just saying stuff we've never done. We went from kissing every second we could the first five months of our relationship to not kissing again until our wedding day. Yeah, and it was totally worth it. And it was hard. Let's be honest. Yeah. It wasn't because we were perfect. There were days where we would say, hey, I want to kiss you right now. But we held each other accountable because we knew that our goal was to not kiss again yeah. until we got married. So, that was question of the day. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope it blessed you. If this video was helpful, please send it to somebody. We would love for everyone yeah. to possibly, everyone who wants to possibly get this message to get it. So, we'll see you guys next Tuesday for question of the day.